Hello, and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop board game bag check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your gaming, your gaming, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Let me put my years of game playing, event organizing, and game night hosting to use for you. Tonight, the question we are asking and we are going to answer is what's in the box in regards to this, the Batman edition of talisman specifically the batman super villains edition of talisman and i gotta admit i had no clue this game existed for a long time and i was very surprised that it exists a version of talisman the magical quest game originally published by games workshop back in the 80s when i was a huge games workshop fanboy rethemed where you play the batman villains trying to escape from arkham asylum i gotta say that sounds pretty awesome to me so what we're going to do tonight is we're going to take a look and see what you get in the box. So, and then in the coming weeks, I'm going to read the instructions and get this game played, especially with my wife, who is a huge Batman fan. I'm the huge Talisman fan. She's the huge Batman fan. Together, this should be a great game for the two of us to play. I also plan on trying it out with our kids, assuming it's not overly dark, which could happen with Batman. We'll see, depending on uh, the artwork on the cards. We'll have to make that call for what age I want my kids to be able to see this. Uh, this does say ages. I can't read that, sorry. 13 plus, so that might be a bit much for my little one. We'll see. But anyway, before I get to that, um, I am the Tabletop Bellhop. You can find me all over the web at as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. You can head over to our website, tabletopbellhop.com, where you can find all kinds of gaming content, including other unboxing videos, actual plays, game reviews, news, as well as answers to other people's gaming and game night questions. Because we are trying to be a Dear Abby for gamers. If you've got a gaming or game night question for us, you can send that to questions at tabletopbellhop.com through email, or you can head over to that website and just click on Ask the Bellhop at the top of the page, and you'll get a form you can fill out. So that's enough for self-promotion. We're going to take a look at what you get in Talisman Batman from the Op Games. All right, we're going to crack the shrink wrap first. I got to admit, I like the art already. Like that, although I do think this is going to be a darker Batman. This is going to be a dark night, not a... Definitely not a 60s Batman. All right, here we go. Right on this top, we got a set of instructions, not too thin, not too thick. That's always nice, a flow chart showing you the encounter sequence. I don't remember Talisman being that complicated. We'll see. Quick flip through the rules. There's a really good shot of all the different components here showing actual game components. That's always nice. A good component list is a key to a good rulebook to me. Lots of great examples here. Lots of artwork. Nice dark text. Look at this. You have more examples than text. And to me, that is a good thing. That is something I want to see in a board game rule book. Still looking at combat. We're looking at objects, followers, feats. I don't know what feats are. Additional rules. There's a lot of additional rules. So different board locations have special rules. And then alternate rules. So skipping the alternate rules, we are looking at 13 pages of rules. That's pretty decent for a, a, a standard board game to me. And then we do have some alternative play rules. An index in the back, which is a little odd for this than a book, but sure, why not? And again, the talisman encounter sequence on the back. Next, we've got I gotta admit, this is gonna be a huge board. I'm gonna have to zoom out to show you this. Yeah, that's not a small board. All right. There you go. That is the board. So, knowing the original game, this should be the outer realm, the inner realm. There should be a way to bridge between them, though I don't see it. So I don't. So there's a difference right there. I don't see the guardian that would bridge between these. And then you should have the inner realm, which should be a matter of going from the entrance and having to go room by room all the way along until you get to the final security control room to be able to escape. What I'm not seeing is like the guard that guards it. Um, you've got bathrooms, offices, corridors, kitchens. Deserted rooms. They're showing a number of symbols. So these would be two cards would be drawn on this spot. 
You got the stairs there as a one card. Some of these do have special rules. So you've got like Don Carmo Carmine Falcone. You may roll one dob die to accept the job. One, take one health from another character. Two, defeat one enemy. Deliver, discard one follower. Deliver, discard one legendary object. Deliver, discard three coins. Or deliver, discard two coins. But I don't know what you get when you complete the job. So again, I haven't played this game, but you definitely got a nice noir, dark look to this. Definitely not very bright, but that is a nice, that is a big board. That is bigger than I was expecting, and it kind of folds up different than I would have hoped. But it works. Alright, so we have punch boards. It looks like we've got trackers. Some kind of trackers that have numbers on them, so there's going to be some type of dial tracker. Um... Yeah, these are going to go over top of them. So you've got a, a... What do these even say on them? So these say strength, cunning, and health. So those are going to be your three stats. And three things you're going to track for your character, your strength. We have a whole bunch of just numbered bat symbols in different colors. You've got chaotic or righteous. So it looks like there's going to be some type of alignment system. Righteous or Chaotic. Uh, there are coins. There are two-sided coins. They are, of course, the uh, marked-up double-sided coin for um, Two-Face. Then we got all kinds of things. We have our characters. Uh, the Joker might creep my kids out. <laughs> and just grabbing a hobby knife to cut these open. So these, just as a note, did come a little warped. I'm just going to have to throw those under something a little heavy. Get them a little straightened out. Possibly just bend them back. Yeah, I should just bend them back work pretty well. So we're going to take a quick look. Here is the Joker's card. I don't know if you can read that there, but what it does say is you begin the game with two feats. During the game, you always have at least one feat. Gain a feat each time you use your last feat. Those sound like the replacement for spells. When you attack another character, you may choose to use cunning instead of strength. So again, you have uh, cunning instead of craft. You may not do this when you're attacked by another character. It starts with three feet, one coin, four health, two strength, and four cunning. So then not only did they retheme it to be Batman, they have changed the names of some of the things. And then on the back is a whole deranged here so this says deranged you suffer delirium for three turns leave all your objects followers and coins in the space you became deranged while you are deranged you have strength one cunning one move one space per turn retrain your character health retain your fate you cannot add the additional strength and cunning points of your character you cannot perform or gain feats so that to me sounds exactly like being turned into a toad in the original talisman. So instead of being turned into a toad, you can be deranged. I am not going to read all of these off. Obviously, I'll leave them to discover. For you to discover, we have Scarecrow, who also... So deranged rules are just on the back of every card. We have Harley Quinn. Uh, again, a little suggestive, but that's kind of normal for her. Artwork's not too bad. I don't think my girls would have a problem with this. Joker's a bit creepy, but Joker's supposed to be a bit creepy. We have the Penguin. We have Bane. Two-Face. Ra's al Ghul. Clayface. Poison Ivy, who is wearing a surprising amount of clothes. The Joker's Daughter, Mr. Freeze, and then Batman. I have no idea, but it looks like you can run into Batman on various different floors, and he gets tougher the further up he is. So the Batman card has uh, first floor, second floor, third floor, control room. Um, if you defeat Batman, you roll the die to get something. And he starts in the guard post. So it looks like Batman's going to wander around the board. That is something that did not exist in Talisman. Alright, what do we have here? Uh, these are just the little pegs for putting together the um, dials. 
I showed earlier on the cardboard punch outs. I'm not going to bother showing those off. We have some really pretty dice. Okay, I like the dice. Batman dice for the win. I might have to. I might have to steal a couple of these for playing Powered by the Apocalypse. That's your one, because again, you're playing the villains, right? So you don't want Batman. So it's a six sided die, one to six, with a V one being a bat symbol. Then we have, so I don't know what those coins are compared to that. We have plastic coins. Oh, these are something different. These? That's a nice touch, whatever they are. I'm going to guess these are those fate tokens or whatever. They say talisman on them. They say talisman one. So these are the talisman. The talisman are gold coins with the, uh, the Illuminati symbol on them. That's, a, that's an interesting design choice. So these are plastic, gold-colored. They're, they're a nice, solid piece. There's a ton of them. I don't know why you would need that many talismans in a game of talisman. Uh, then we have miniatures. And I hope my camera is going to participate here because what I've seen of these, these are really nice-looking miniatures. I'm not going to bother putting them back in the bag. Some nice dynamic sculpts, nice flowing clothes, all very uh, definitely unique, definitely unique characters. Detail's pretty good. It's um, not like resin miniature top of the line, but I would say better than the miniatures I've seen in other hobby board games that definitely beats out, say, Horrified or um, what's another one? Big Trouble in Little China. I would say these have more detail. But they're not at the level of some like the the cool mini or not games. Decent though, like no complaints. There's nothing wrong with these miniatures at all. Miniature for every character is a nice touch. Back when I played the original Talisman, I was stuck with cardboard standees for my characters, and then eventually they put out metal miniatures, which I was able to find most of, but not all of. Yeah, these are nice. I'm going to feel guilty not painting these. Really impressive looking. Batman's in quite the pose. He's doing the superhero land. <laughs> I would have figured more of a cloaked in shadow look. That, that, is, that is a lot of cape. Batman's showing a lot of cape. And finally, wow, Poison Ivy's like on a throne. All right, minis. Up next, a ton of cards. I don't know if these are separate decks. Yes, they are. So there are three different decks in Counter 1, 2, and 3. So right there is a change from the original Talisman as well. Because in the original Talisman, it didn't matter what part of the board you were on. You still drew the same number of cards, but then the, the spot you were on might do something. like may, Might make you draw more cards or increase the strength of the cards that are there. Whereas here, we actually have different sets of cards. There's a different deck. So I'm going to crack open set one here. Uh, note, these do have the quick pull release, but I'm having a hard time getting it. So I'm going to cheat. Uh, nope, they're not all one. So, we have Encounter 1. Well, maybe not. Maybe that's not what I thought it was. Maybe these encounters are something different. These say feats. That's a lot of feats. This says security key cards. Oh, we have a purchase deck. That is some another carryover. I wonder if there's an equivalent of the mule. Allows you to carry more objects and followers. So we have a purchase deck. So now that I see that these aren't all deck one, two, three, I'm going to open them all up and then we'll look through the cards. Okay, yeah, so we have some encounter twos, but then we have a whole bunch more encounter ones. 
a whole bunch more counter ones. There we go. That's more what I expected to see. So that second pack was almost all encounter ones and some encounter twos. And the counter threes and more encounters. So there's not a lot of threes, but that makes sense because there's not a lot of three spots on the board. Okay. So we're going to start with security key card shows a talisman. I have to assume that's a talisman. Yeah, so it's a four-player game. You have four talismans. That's the equivalent. Uh, the same, you may only enter the control room if you have a security room key. So I don't know. These, these talisman things must be the fate tokens or whatever they were called. The, what were they called? What were they called? Yeah, fate. So those must represent fate. So four talismans, or the equivalent thereof. What I'm going to do is throw these back in the box as I'm going. Then we have the purchase deck, including things like the patrol schedule, which lets you not lose a health in the in a patrolled corridor. Oh, we have a few of the same. We have multiples of the same card. Patrol schedule, patrol schedule. So we have four of those. So they're not all unique. Artwork looks like it's right from the comic books. So the purchase deck has multiples of different things. We have a helmet. So there's going to be your armors. We have a bulletproof vest. We have the riot shield. We have a baseball bat. Not a lot in this deck. You have the loot bag. There you go. The loot bag, you can carry one extra for four objects. So your mule from Talisman has become the loot bag. There are loot bags. I didn't see a horse. There are the guard's keys. So that's it. There's not a lot of variety in the purchase deck. Four of each item so everyone can buy them. Feats, I'm going to guess, are spells. Uh, i got to admit, I'm disappointed. There is no artwork on these spells, these feats. They just say something. Pickpocket. Use it at the start of your turn. Before you move, take one object of your choice or one coin from any character. All right, very boring. I'm just going to show you a few of these. It is. It looks like a clipboard, and it's a wall of text. Did break the rules in some way. Boring. Those would have been cooler with artwork. Then we get to the encounter deck. This is going to be the stuff you flip up when you explore. Now we're into full-color artwork. Uh, first one we have is Spoiler, Enemy Hero. A spoiler is searching this area. She will remain here until she is defeated. So, spoiler, a, a Batman, another villain. We have the Black Mask. I'm just going to grab some random. We have a straight jacket, which is you cannot use feats. No feats affect you. It's a legendary object. I don't know what legendary objects mean. Those were not in Talisman. And then we have Bribe Money. It is an object. Exchange immediately for one coin and then place this card in the discard pile. So, these are the various things you're going to find wandering around Arkham. Including some of the stuff that was in the event deck, like there's a patrol schedule. So there's going to be a number of these for each. Um, they have artwork at the top, text on the bottom. Text all is a little small, but not too bad. Like, I can read that from here, which isn't bad for me. And I have older eyes. Uh, the amount of artwork actually varies. Some of these, uh, you have duplicates of the same event. So that's just the one pile. The two piles going to be the same thing, but with different things. Like, here's Batgirl. Batgirl has eight strength. Holy cow. Batgirl is trying to secure the area. She will remain here until she's defeated. Uh, there's the Joker's Water Lapel Flower Legendary Object. It adds two to your cunning somehow. It's like magic. It's the cunning flower. Again, comic book style artwork. I don't see anything here that's uh, gory, which is good. I could probably play this with my girls. I think they would enjoy it. And then the very small deck of Event 3 cards. So, that is what you get in a copy of Talisman Batman Super Villains Edition. Uh, decent box insert. Looks like there's actually a spot here to put the dice, even though they weren't in there or something. Yeah, the dice will fit there, maybe. So everything came bagged. Let's see. Dice fit here. Yep. Just spot to put the dice. Slots. Uh, definitely room if they did put out an expansion for this. There's room in this box. 
plenty of room. Like, there is room for a whole other stack of cards. You can fit a whole other stack of cards here. What I'm going to do, though, is split these up just so they don't spill anywhere. Lots of room for more stuff here. Uh, I do have some stuff to punch out before we play. Those will obviously fit in here. Um, there's even a spot for more characters here, even though it didn't come with any. Like, if I got more characters, they would fit here. Yep. So, that's cool. Love the minis. Just owning some Batman minis is a cool bonus. Huge fan of Talisman from back in the day. Um, fitting more boards would probably fit once you remove the cardboard. So if once these punch outs weren't here, you could fit in at least a board or two. Plus, you could always remove the insert. So that was Talisman Batman Super Villains Edition. Although there isn't a Talisman Batman Heroes Edition. At least not yet. Maybe it'll be coming. This is uh, published by USAopoly, or otherwise known as The Op, uh, with a uh, license from Games Workshop. DC, Batman, Warner Brothers, all that stuff um, plays two to six players. It says 90 plus minutes. So we're looking at an hour and a half minimum. I'm hoping it doesn't become the six hour slot that the original Talisman could during some plays. Uh, not having read the rules, I can't see the difference. It is neat to see how they retheme Talisman to have more Batman references. Um, the fact that like you need a security key instead of a talisman, and you have, uh, I forget what it was, it was a duffel bag or something instead of a mule, and things like that. Looks very neat, very interested in checking this game out. When I do check it out, be sure to watch my social media feeds, uh, Tabletop Bellhop everywhere, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Pinterest even. And I'll be talking about the game as I play it, sharing pictures. My Instagram will be filled with pictures of this game once we get it to the table. Um, plus, I'll be publishing a full review over at TabletopBellhop.com eventually. And we'll be talking about the game on our live show. We record a episode of the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern. That gets edited down and released as an audio podcast that comes out on Tuesdays at 2 a.m. Eastern. And you can find that on any podcatcher you want, Spotify, Apple, uh, Google Play, or even on iHeartRadio. You just search for Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast. For the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, I am Motu's Know the Tabletop Bellhop. If you did dig this video, it would be awesome if you hit the subscribe button. And if you care to tip your bellhop, you can do that at patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop. That's it for me. Good night and game on.